Hi, so welcome to our second official stream, technically our third if you watched our slime one where I just kind of showed how to do it and it was just really my hands. <laughs> Last time we tried to talk about like how crafting was used for spying and a whole bunch of other stuff like coding and really cool fun things. I was in my office which is actually built out of cinder blocks because <laughs> it's part of the expansion of the, on the building. So it doesn't get the best Wi-Fi or internet signal. So sometimes stuff like streaming gets a little bit trickier because it requires a bit more of a stronger signal, even when I'm just hardwired in. So I guess since maybe not everybody knows about our super awesome library, we are actually in original Carnegie, which is why I said there have been like expansions on the building because it used to be like if we were like holding a model like maybe this big, it was just literally one room with some shelves built like over a hundred years ago. And then eventually as the town grew, the library grew and they added on a whole bunch of other cool things. I'm actually on our second level with the main level right above us, which is where almost everything is like our fiction, nonfiction, as well as teen computers and our movies. And then Downstairs is where like the offices are as well as the kids room or the activity room, which is kind of where I am hanging out right now. Um, so this is super exciting and terrifying. I'm not really would think since I do so much of our like YouTube videos and our TikToks that I would be so much better at just talking to a camera, but this is awful and awkward and Hopefully you're super chill and completely cool with it because I don't know what I'm doing and I hope I have enough to talk about for an hour. So I guess the first time we tried starting with a book talk. So we're going to just do that again. I think this book is not being talked about enough on social media. The cover is stunning. The story is insane. And it really just, it, it needs so much more love. It is the book of Living Secrets by Madeline Rue. Look at that cover. Like, seriously, isn't that stunning? Like, how could you not want to just instantly pick that book up and give it a read? Like, I am I was obsessed with it. I literally put it on hold, not knowing what it was about because the cover art was absolutely beautiful. But the basic premise is these our two main characters literally fall into the world of their favorite romance novel. Not gonna lie, who hasn't wanted to fall into their favorite comfort read or comfort show? I know there are a few I wouldn't mind, you know, just getting teleported to and just never coming back out because they're so comfy and they're so much fun to just enjoy. The problem with their book that they fell into, it's not quite what it seems on the surface. It's not so much a romance as it is actually a horror. We are, I'm currently not that far into it. I think, what am I on? Chapter 10. I should be much farther when I'm doing this. chapter six, but I have a habit of reading four or five things at once, so I don't tend to read very quickly at anything. So I am only in chapter six, but our, one of our main characters is Connie, who just found out that the world is taken over by monsters and people are just kind of trying to live. There's like some kind of weird apocalypse scenario instead of this great Edwardian romance thing, kind of like. Jane Austen type stories or um what was that Netflix series that everybody fell in love with God. Bridgerton that's it so that's kind of what they were thinking they were going to get themselves into but that's not what happened the book they have they're obsessed with it was a one-shot book written by an author who nobody's ever seen or heard from after the release of the book, like the, her publishers know nothing about her. She's never... So the author also has zero social media, like just, just no contact from this author. So nobody knows what happens. I think the author is in her book because at the beginning when they get transported, they go to like this um, mystical esoteric store with like tarot cards and this weird eccentric bookseller who has a spell to transport them into the book and he had mentioned it he had done it once before and it had worked so i think the author went into her own book and then just never came back out again 
So that is where I am at. I haven't gotten very far into it, obviously, but I'm really, really excited to see what happens. The monsters are really fun. I don't know if the people are going to be monsters, but they're at least like zombies and dragon things. I don't know. It's insane, if I'm going to be honest, like super cool and fun. Okay. Um, so, so far, that's only been five minutes. Holy crikey. I need to talk. So much slower. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, also we do, I am in charge of what's called Creative Studio, so I do like a lot of the craft programming. We are, oh, I totally forgot to grab them. Well, that's okay. Next month we're making binary and Morse code bracelets out of beads and make like cute little messages that you can wear. They're so much fun. They take way longer than I remember them taking. I always, I have no craft patience. Like I just don't have any patience to sit and do things. So beadwork is my least favorite for actually just anything that takes more than five minutes of effort is my least favorite. For example, my poor bee. I uh, saw a button TikTok ages ago and never actually committed to making one. But I finally decided I was going to do it because everybody on TikTok makes crochet look so easy. And I thought, hey, I can knit and I know the basics. So surely it can't be that hard. Well, this is B1. As you can see, he, uh, he doesn't look like a bee. He's supposed to be antenna. He somehow got a nose. And I did not sew his wings right at all. I also don't know if he's the right size because I kind of sort of just guessed what I was doing. So this is B1. B2, I kind of figured it out a little bit better. You see, look at his cute little wings. Super adorable. Not a puppy. Don't know how I did the flat face, but I did a flat face. Only problem is, is he's a long boy, so yes. TikTok makes lots of crafts look super, super easy in it. They're are not always easy, but it was so much fun to make these two. And I am hopefully going to figure out how to make a proper stuffy, because that's the whole reason I wanted to learn to crochet was to make a stuffy. And it's also National Craft Month, so part of the reason why I'm talking about my random craft projects. And then I also did manage to at crochet these cute little floral co coasters. I thought maybe if I went back to the basics, I could figure it out. So they're basically granny squares in the shape, shape of flowers. Really cute and really fun. If you want the patterns, when I upload this to our YouTube channel, I'll include the link I got these from. It is a YouTube video. She doesn't have written patterns, unfortunately, which I would prefer, but that's it's fine. It works. Um, as far as creative studios, what else is creative studios? We do have a bunch of cool fun tech toys that you can come in and play with. We have like the robots and we have something called merch cubes that are like these cool little foam augmented reality toys. So you can like just kill zombies or dig for dinosaurs, which sounds like it might be a little bit more for like a small child, but they're really, really fun. And the amount of apps that exist, like I think a medical school actually developed an anatomy app for it to help their students learn anatomy and find like different organs and body parts without actually having to use a living person or a dead person. They do sometimes use um, people who have donated their bodies to medical science. So they have an app that lets them explore the body without actually having to deal with another person living or dead, which is super, super cool and kind of eerie in so many different ways. Uh, oh, that brings me to another book I read. I read a book called Dark Archives this month. It's about skin books, and I do quite literally mean books about human flesh, which is simultaneously I learned a super common, but not as common as you would think. And they have like maybe a hundred year time span where you're most likely to find these actual books that were bound in human flesh. And it wasn't like, a, like serial killers or monsters that were doing it, but doctors. We were taking like bits of like patients who had passed or convicted criminals who had been executed and rebinding their favorite books in it just for the oddity and to be like, hey, I have this. The problem is what that they're not readily known or who all has one. Like Harvard has one and a couple other libraries and museums have admitted to having them and have had it verified. 
but people are kind of grossed out by the concept of a human flesh book. So it's not super verifiable because most people don't want you to test their books to verify it, whether it's because they're booksellers and they want to sell it for that creep factor and get the money that comes with something being super rare and super morbid. Or they don't want to deal with the backlash of people finding out that they have this book and they're not doing anything to maybe reunite it with the cover, with the family, or to properly interior it or give it a funeral. Because that is something that we're, people are kind of coming across ethically with these types of books. That they think they should maybe bury them or try to repatriate them. But it goes through the process of how the leather making process destroys all DNA. So they can't actually even tell the race of the person or country of origin because it's all destroyed. They only can tell via proteins that it's not cow, sheep, horse, that it is indeed, um, they can't even verify that it's human. It's more of a, it's related to great apes or chimpanzees and monkeys and people like animals in that general field. And that's how they come to the idea that it's human. So it's super interesting and super fascinating. If you like books like Rule My Cat, Eat My Eyeballs or From Here to Eternity by Caitlin Dowdy, I totally recommend this because it's super interesting and super fascinating, the morals behind selling or keeping these books, as well as the process to verify whether or not they ex a book is or isn't, and the history of binding books in human flesh, which has an actual term, but I can't remember it, and I probably would have butchered it anyway, so I'm not even going to try. So that is a couple of books I have read this month. Um, on to super serious, important news stuff. If you've been following the news and probably Twitter as well, you might have noticed that at least two confirmed deepfakes have come out of the current conflict with Ukraine and Russia. One of President Zelensky, I'm really hoping I'm saying that right, and then one of Putin, neither of which were true and were just um, video manipulations via an AI program that can take the compressed form of like thousands and thousands of images of a person talking and doing all these other things, and then superimpose it on another body to make it seem like they're saying or doing something they're not actually doing. So both world co country leaders have had this happen to them, which is super scary and super terrifying because they did start out being really bad. If you remember the Obama one where he's, what was he singing? He was singing some song, but it was like real choppy and really, really bad. That was kind of it. That was a form of deep fake. And then there was a few <laughs> inappropriate videos with specifically like a Nigel Thornberry going on. That was a deep, that was an early deep fake that wasn't so good. They're, they used to be incredibly obvious and then they got a little bit better and people couldn't tell right away, but they were noticing that because they were using still images that the deep fakes weren't blinking. So that was one way. And now they have managed to fix that as well. So it's a little bit harder. If you want more info, I can totally give you the sources I found on this. Apparently, it's not really that hard to make a deep think. You just need a strong enough computer. So say you have a gaming computer and maybe you just update the image processor and your um, hard drive. You could and get the right software. You could totally just make your own. You can also pay people to make them for you. So it's, they're very surprisingly accept, accessible and easy to make. Not so easy to tell, which is why you kind of have to, if you do see videos, especially like videos that are eliciting that huge, terrifying, strong emotion, but it doesn't look like it's been obviously tampered with, it might be a really, really great idea to like cross check that with like other videos, maybe other people talking about it. Maybe just straight up Googling, did so-and-so actually say or do this? Because otherwise, you might get pulled into another country's attempt at propaganda, which is going to be a huge thing. The social media aspects are going to be, like, overdone with other types of social media propaganda and attempts at disinformation and misinformation to kind of sway us one way or another or to encourage countries to take sides. So that is definitely something to watch out for. Now, 
Obviously, not countries aren't the only ones that are going to use deep fakes or have used deep fakes. You can use them for normal people to commit anything you want. Like, um, but you could use it for unsavory means, or you could even, if you had, say, enough photos of a grandparent or a family member that passed, you could run it through the software and maybe give yourself a video of that family member again. So deep fakes have a use and they can be used for good. They're just not always used for good. There's also software out there to manipulate voices. You can actually take like a short phrase of what someone has said and then use that software to completely create whole conversations that they never had, whether just by strategically picking words or using these software to like clone voices and then make them say whatever you want. So you could get people saying literally anything which is another problem with finding things just on YouTube or just getting them through social media. You don't know if somebody on the other end has access to this software, if they're not sharing it from a more trustworthy or reputable source. And that's not always like big news sources. This could be like independent journalists aren't inherently distrustful or not doing actual journalism or work. It's just you have to double check their history, who they're writing for, check their biases and the blogs they've been posted on to make sure that they don't have a reason to share misinformation or watch out for like bot farms, which are also a huge problem where you can't trace the post to any one person or at anything original. It just showed up one day, the accounts just showed up one day with out of nowhere, with seemingly no logic, they're very, very young, and they're just constantly spamming one or two news articles that are not fake, but they're probably not 100% true, or just outright fake as well. So you kind of have to watch where you're sharing things from, and where you're seeing videos, and where the videos are coming from. So you always kind of want to just, you know, double check sources and all of that good stuff. Watch for maybe like fuzzy pixels out of place, eyes that aren't blinking, um, anything that just looks a little off. Maybe there's like a weird lag in the voice so it doesn't sound quite human. Like just kind of keep your eye out and make sure you're using your best judgment, whether it's news on important world events or just stuff domestically or just anything random that could pop up. Because while fake news and disinformation and misinformation are most commonly targeted around major world events like elections, wars, conflicts, um, the pandemic, they can also just be smaller community-based things that people are trying to elicit a strong emotion for. So you want to make sure that you're not like full steam ahead sharing everything because it made you really, really angry or it made you really, really happy. Um, a common one that makes people really, really happy are those like animal rescue videos. And we've all seen it, like the dog is in the well or a cat stuck in a river, horse stuck in a giant pit of mud. And these people are saving them, which is great and amazing and awesome. But if you go to their YouTubes or their TikToks, you start to notice that a lot of the animals start looking alike, like very, very, very alike. To the point where it's almost more like they're purposefully putting the animals in these situations rather than just happening upon an animal and saving it and kind of maybe like filming it for safety reasons in case someone is like, you stole my animal, you did that on purpose, but really they were just somebody on a walk, saw the dog, helped the dog. So it's, it's really gross the different ways that people will manipulate media and even take advantage of our emotions through video and photos if we don't do like that one extra step of going to the channel and just seeing their post history and kind of double checking to see that they're not constantly posting the same content or they aren't posting like really widely different content like it's fine that's channels have diversity that's that's completely normal and acceptable like you don't want you wouldn't go to our YouTube channel and only want us to talk about books. You would want to maybe see our craft tutorials or these fun tech courses and a bunch of different stuff. 
but we all, they are still specifically narrowed in at like library services and digital and literacy skills. Now, if somebody has like a Putin video, an Obama video, um, three dog saving videos, and then I don't, you know, a music video, it might be a little sketchy and you might want to double check what's going on and that you're not being taken or even like um trim trim which is a content farm i don't know if trim trim is still around five minute crafts might be another one where they're just constantly churning out really bad content but they're doing it because they know people are going to click and watch out of just pure hatred and annoyance and they're still giving them the engagement they need so it's much still the same with these other content creators that are doing super sketchy things like bot farms or trolls. They're specifically trying to get you to just click and watch, whether it's out of hate or agreement or you want to know what the other side is saying. You kind of have to be super, super careful or you could fall down some scary rabbit holes. Whew. Okay, I talked so long about that. But no, seriously, if you want any more info, I can give you links on the YouTube video because I will hopefully have this posted by tomorrow. Maybe tonight. Depends on how productive I feel. I do have a few other things to record. As well as links to my flowers and the bees. Well, the actual bee powder, not my bees. My, my poor deformed bees are going to just hide in the bottom of my craft bag to never see the light of day because they're sad. And then you can also, if you are a member of our library or other Clevenet libraries, you can get this through Libby, I believe, as well as put the physical copy on hold and check it out from your home library. If you're not a Kinsman card holder or Kinsman resident, you can check it out from any other Clevenet system or your, just any other library. If you're a different system, maybe you happened upon me from Warren or Akron or a PA library or I don't know, somewhere in England, you can still access the book probably from your own library. If you just kind of go online and put it on hold or maybe call and be like, hey, do you have this book? I want to read it. It looks awesome. Which also is another thing you can do. Like if they don't have the book, sometimes libraries will let you request it. So if you really want to read it or if enough of you really want to read it, you might be able to convince them. Not always, though. Don't, like, badger people about that because that's annoying and kind of rude. Like, just, just don't do it. Unless it's just, like, a legitimate, hey, I would love to see this book. Here is my one book request, please, kind of a thing. Um, what are some fun programs coming up? I have one day left of Creative Studios where you can make a glitter tumbler. So if you are in the general same area as us, you can call and get an appointment. I will only have two open though. So you will have to definitely rush in and make sure to get your appointment. I also, you can start signing up for April's craft. Um, there's a bunch of fun other teen programs. There's the Teens Create. I'm not sure what they're making next month, but you can always get in on that. There's a few really cute kids programs if you've got littles or know any littles that might need to come play music and movement and story times. There's a cookbook club you can call and get in on if you are, you know, in our area and would like to come and cook and hang out with us. So I did so much better this time. <laughs> I think last time I was in and out in under like 15 minutes and I've made it a whole half hour. So I think before I lose my voice because I can already feel it getting scratchy and dry. We're going to head out. Please join us next time, next month, same time, same day. And we'll talk about some other fun things and hopefully other books and fun crafts. And maybe if I can figure out why the stream keeps going wonky, we'll try and play some Jackbox because that'll be super fun too. All right. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>